just so thankful to be able to share God's word with you today. And of course, if you are uh, online with us, we welcome you, our Facebook family here at Faith Family Church. And we believe that this word is just as much for you today. Amen. No matter if it's a playback or whether you're watching it live. So, you know, give an ear to hear to what God will say to you, and we believe that you will be blessed. Amen? Amen. 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 Well, I want to continue something that I started on Easter Sunday, and then I picked it up again uh, a couple weeks after that. I want to pick it back up again. I know Mother's Day was uh, a special day. But I want to look back at the subject of life and death. Life and death. It's a series that we're taking out of Deuteronomy chapter 30, but I want to look today specifically at Proverbs 18. In the book of Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 20, fruit of his mouth. That is true both naturally and spiritually. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Amen. So a man's stomach will be satisfied what he consumes in life, what he partakes of in life, will be satisfied from the fruit that comes out of his mouth and from the produce of his lips. How many of y'all know the fruit is in the produce section? <laughs> from the produce of his lips, he shall be filled. He goes on to say that death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. Amen. Amen. Well, I was doing some work, you know, with the setup team last night, getting ready uh, to minister to you today. I went out to my vehicle and I came back in. And as I was walking in, I heard this from the Lord. The power of the tongue is the ability to choose between life and death in any given situation. Amen. We're going to talk about the power of the tongue today. Because the Bible says that death and life are in the power of the tongue. And so I want to show you from the Word of God that what I heard from the Spirit of God is true and based on the Word of God. And that is that the power of the tongue, to understand that, it's your ability to choose life and death in any given situation. Amen? Amen? We, of course, know that in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 30, the Lord God said this, and I believe he's saying it to us today. I call heaven and earth as witness today against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. And I believe that though this may have been stated thousands of years ago, I believe it's true for you and I today that God sets before you the choice between life and death. Amen. Between experiencing good in life and experiencing death in life. The choice between experiencing his blessing and experiencing curse. But the choice is up to you. Life and death is a matter of choice. You get to choose what your experience in life will be. Amen. Some people say, you know, well, how does faith play into that? We don't follow faith. We follow faith. All right. <laughs> in other words, we don't go by, you know, what will be will be or the, that things just happen in life by chance or by happenstance. No, we believe that you can control the outcomes of your life in any area of your life because of this statement right here. He says, I give you the ability, the free moral agency to choose in this life whether you want to experience good or evil, whether you want to experience blessing or cursing, whether you want to experience life or death. You get to choose. Amen. And then he urges us to choose life. The choice is up to you. You say, well, is that 
true. And that's why we're taking the time to minister on this because of the impact. We've often gone along with, well, the things that are happening to me are beyond my ability to control. And even God is in control and he's sovereign. And, and this must be the will of God that I don't have this and that I have that because God is in control and his sovereignty reigns over all. That's not what he said in this particular verse. He says, I'm giving you the choice to what your experience in life is going to be, whether good or not so good. He encourages us to choose life, and not only for your sake, but so that your children can live. How many of y'all know that our decisions have an impact on our children? Amen. What we decide to do about our marriage, what we decide to do about our money, what we decide to do about where we work. I mean, all in every area, our decisions in life have some bearing on another on our children's lives. And so he urges us to choose life. Yeah. Jesus came along, of course, in John chapter 10 and verse 10, and he made a powerful statement that goes right along with what he's saying in Deuteronomy. He said, of course, the, the thief is only there to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I came so that they may have real and eternal life, more and better life than they've ever dreamed of. Amen. If you're not living the life that you've dreamed of, the choice to live that life is up to you. Amen. Amen. He said, I came so that you could experience a better life. And I want you to know this. No matter how good your life is going right now, there is a better life that you can live. I mean, things might be great financially. Things might be great in your relationship. But they're still better. And that's what Jesus came. is so you can experience the better life. But in this same way, you have to learn how to choose life over death. So I left off the last time with a question that I want to pick right back up on this time. So how do you choose life instead of death? I mean, I don't mean people regularly that don't want to experience good in life. I don't, I don't mean people that would choose death over life or, or cursing instead of blessing or evil instead of good. I mean, most of us want good. Yeah. We, so how then, since the choice is ours, how do we make the choice for life, it comes down to this key verse of scripture and your understanding of it. He tells you exactly how to choose life when you look at Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21. In Proverbs 18 and 21, God says, death and life are in the power of your job. In the other words, he says, death and life, you choose. Here he says, how you choose it is through this thing called the power of the tongue. My question to you today is how well do you understand and, and embrace the power of the tongue? Because those who love it will eat its fruits. You may say, well, love what? Love the power of the tongue? Love death? Love life? How about all three? That's good. It could refer to all three. Death is in the power of the tongue, and if you love death, you will eat the fruit of it. You could talk yourself into an early grave. Yes. <laughs> Same way. Life are in the power of the tongue, and if you love life, how many of y'all know you can love life? Yeah. Well, if you love life, you'll eat the fruit of it, because it's in the power of the tongue. And then also, the power of the tongue is the it. Death and light are in the power of the tongue, and those that love the power of the tongue will eat its fruit. How many of y'all know when you love something, you get good at it? Amen. I like this one. I mean, I really, really like this one. Um, I told this, this story earlier, and I, I'll share it with you all. I remember the first time I swam across the pool. It was in the YMCA off of Bradshaw Avenue in Detroit, Michigan. <laughs> old building. Uh, it almost looks abandoned yeah. today. But, uh, I believe the swimming pool was in the basement. And I can vividly see myself, I mean, probably like Andre's age, or you know, a little bit younger than that, eight or nine years old. And my dad was there, and uh, we had been, you know, going through swim lessons and kick on the side and learn how to kick and you, know, you do your little motorboat and different things and you push on the side and you kick. But I had never swam all the way across without stopping, 
and without assistance. Well, this was the day. I mean, they had it all set up. They had people out there to help you. But the goal was to start on this side and to finish on that side. And I remember it, I pushed off and I started kicking. And I wasn't doing the swimming, but I was going to just kick and I held my breath and I got all the way to the other side. I remember that vividly to this day. Well, I really liked to swim. Uh, but, but I really liked it, so I got good at it. I mean, swam through high school, you know, went to the city finals, all that kind of stuff. Even got a partial scholarship in, 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 in college. Amen. Amen. Uh, and even to this day, I enjoy it. Well, when you love something, you get good at it. You think about it. You talk about it. You practice it. You like I mean, it's something that you really, really like. And that's what he's saying in this verse. The people that love life, and love the power of the tongue, they get good at it to the point where they eat the fruit of it. They love it. They're not just, oh, yeah, you know, words matter, but, you know, God understands. No, they understand the power of the tongue, and then they therefore use it intentionally. So when you love something, you get good at it. You know, the Bible talks about all three of these things. Um, so I want to challenge you today to love the power of the tongue, but then also I want to challenge you today to love life. I, I, I'll never forget this. I was, um, you know, I, I worked with children, teenagers, different things, different times in my life, and I remember one person said, you know, just a young, just a young child, I hate my life. And I don't know, I, I, I think I've been there at a point in my life, and, you know, just going through troubled times, and the thought comes at least, man, I I don't really like what's going on in my life right now. It's one thing to think it, but it's another thing to say it. I, <laughs> I don't know why I'm thinking about this, but the, you know, how, how many of y'all know your words have power? Yeah. I was a bank teller at the Telecom Credit Union in Detroit, Michigan. And uh, you know, I'm just processing stuff. And I think it was a Saturday morning. This lady kind of rushes in, pulls in, and she sends up the, the, the container, and she wants to make a deposit or, or, or make a withdrawal or something. And I sent it right back out to her. And then she looked over. And then I, you know, I, I pushed the button. I said, uh, I need your driver's license. She said, ooh, I hate you. <laughs> I felt it when she said it. <laughs> she don't even know me. <laughs> but she said she hates it. What's going on? There's this power in words. Maybe I frustrated her because I don't know how I handled that. Maybe I could have been a little bit more pleasant about it or whatever the case may be. But your words have power. Do you hate your life? The Bible says, for he who would love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking God. So we're talking about the, the, the power of the tongue. You've got to understand, if you're going to be the individual who will love life, that at some point you, you get to that place and say, man, I love the life that God has given me. I am so blessed. Things are going so well. If you're ever going to get to that place in your life, in your family, in your business, where your children are concerned, it's going to be because you have followed something in this scripture. You have followed this word. What does it say? He who would love life, he who would see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. If you want to get to that place where your life is going a lot better than it is right now, if you want to love life, then you got to watch your mouth. Amen. you got to keep your mouth from saying bad things. Yes. From saying bad things about yourself, from saying bad things about others, mm -hmm. from saying bad things to others mm -hmm. or about others, mm -hmm. you've got to keep your mouth from speaking evil. And you've got to keep your lips from telling lies, mm -hmm. speaking deceit. There's a counterpart to this verse of scripture because Peter is actually quoting something that was said in the Old Testament. I want to look at it as well because it just gives us new life. He said, who is the man who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? That is a good question. 
If we were to ask that question and send it out in a poll or a petition or, you know, on Facebook and say, hey, you know, if you love your life and if you've seen good in your life, then please respond and, and, and tell it. The individual who gets to that place where they love life and love many days, they are the individual who keeps their tongue from evil and their lips from speaking deceit. What you and I are experiencing today in life is a result of the culmination of words that we've spoken in the past. If you're in a place where you don't love life right now, check up on your words. Because every scripture that we've looked at and talked about indicates that we have the ability to choose the outcome of our life. It's not the person that you met. It's not the parents that you were born to. Come on, it's not the family that you were raised in. No, it is up to you to choose what your life will look like. And if you don't like what, what, it, what it looks like, you have the power to change it, and it is in your mouth. Amen. 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 What you and I are experiencing in life today is the cumulative result of the words that we have spoken in our past. Look at what James says about the top. In James chapter 3 and verse number 2, he says, For we all, all of us, every single one of us, from the pulpit to the parking lot, we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, in what comes out of their mouth, if, if they don't make any mistake in, in saying the wrong, the wrong thing at the wrong time to the wrong person in the wrong way, come on somebody. If you get to the place where you don't make any mistakes with the words that come out of your mouth, then you are a perfect man and able to control your whole body. If you've ever wondered why you can't control yourself when you get around chocolate cake, <laughs> or you can't control yourself when the opposite sex is concerned, or some other stuff, it comes back to your ability to control what comes out of your mouth. If you've been wanting to lose that extra weight or do a certain thing, it's starting. You want to know the reason why we hold up our Bible and say, this is, I am what I say, the what I am what it says I am. I do what it tells me to do. Come on, somebody. The reason why we say that is because it will have an impact on our life. Amen. We'll find ourselves reading that chapter, Monday through Friday, meditating in the Word of God. Why? We set the order with the words of our mouth. Why? Because God said, God said that death and life are in the power of the tongue. It is how you choose what you want your life to look like. You control it with words. But look at the rest of this verse. So he says, we stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man, able also to bribe a whole body. Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn their whole body. Think about that for a moment. My brother's here, he likes to ride horses. He knows how to count them by hand, you know, like a 17-hand horse. I mean, he's a real big dude, you know, real tall, so you don't want to get on a little bitty horse. You know, you're up there on a you know, big old guy on some little bitty horse. You, know, you want a six-foot tall horse, right? Y'all awake this morning? <laughs> but think about it. I mean, no matter how big you are, a horse is going to be bigger than you. We yeah. put a little piece of metal in that horse's mouth and are able to command and control this beast of an animal that is so much stronger and taller and bigger than we are. How is it by this? Not by the, it's not by the reins that is on the side of his head. Not by the hair. You can pull on his hair all you want. You can kick this out. We don't control them by the saddle that we strap on him. We control horses by this little small piece of metal that we put in their mouth. We can tell them to go when we want them to go, stop when we want them to stop, turn right, turn up, turn all the way around if we want them to do that. Why? Just that little piece of metal. Mm -hmm. He said, we do that with horses. He goes on to say in verse 4, look at the ships. You know, I just got off a cruise ship not too long ago. Although they are so large and driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. You know, sometimes in our community, you know, we're oil and gas and we're down in the shipping area. And so sometimes you'll drive by a building and have this big old uh, rudder. Um, I think that's what it's called, the, the propeller. Is that the rudder? Okay, no. But they got this big old propeller. 
<laughs> this massive thing, and it looks huge to us, but then when you go out and look at this huge cruise ship or freight liner, and, 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 or this you know, aircraft carrier, this massive thing is being propelled by something so very small. And matter of fact, the control of the rudder, what we put on that ship, can turn this entire vessel in a completely opposite direction than the way it was headed by simply a rudder. In the same way, your words control your life. If we don't like the direction that it's going in and whatever that it is, you fill in the blank. If you don't like the direction that your marriage is going in, if you don't like the direction that your children are going in, if you don't like the direction that your money is going in, if you don't like the direction that your body is going in, start with the words of your mouth to change its direction and it will obey you. Amen. Yeah. 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 It's reality. So he says, look at the horse. Look at the ships. Even so, the tongue is a little member. I mean, if I were to cut my tongue out of my mouth and put it on a scale, surely it doesn't even weigh a half a pound. Not of the 200 plus pounds that I weigh, it's the smallest member in my body, but it boasts great things. See how great a forest a little fire kindles? Every now and then we'll hear about wildfires in a dry spell, in the, especially out west, and thousands of acres can burn because of one cigarette that was tossed out of a car on the side of the road. An entire forest burned to nothing. In the same way, he says your words. And the tongue is a fire. It's a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body, messes us up in every area, and sets the fire, sets on fire the course of nature. And then watch this part right here. And it is, the tongue is itself set on fire by hell. If you don't understand this, then you're in trouble. Because death experienced in your life, in the life of your family, or life experienced in your life, life of your family, is in the power of your tongue, not the devil's tongue. He don't have any more authority over you. But he tries to get you to use your words against yourself. So all he does is set on fire your own tongue to let you shoot your own self in the foot. It itself is set on fire by hell. This thing is so powerful, it doesn't matter what difficulties you may face in this life, the power of the tongue is, as I said, the ability to choose between life and death in any given situation or circumstance. You might be facing some very impossible and improbable things that when you look at, it doesn't look like there's any way that this could ever change or be any different than it already is. Child of God, love the power of the tongue. Absorb it, think about it, listen to this message again and again. Get, learn how it works. Learn to it, practice it to the point where you perfect it. Why? Because you can change what you've been experiencing in life. Amen. Jesus said it this way. Assuredly, I say unto you, whoever says to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believe those things which he says, which he says will be done, he will have whatsoever he says. Good or bad. You eat the fruit of what you say out of your mouth. Jesus said you can literally look at an impossible situation like a mountain that's in your path and command it and it will wait. I mean, that's a far-stretching reality even to this day. If we were at the foot of a mountain, you mean to tell me I can speak to this mountain and just command it to be moved and to be cast into the depths of the sea? Jesus said yes. Amen. How am I going to do that? What authority, what power do you need? You already got it. It's in your mouth. All you have to do is speak to that mountain, command it to be moved. Don't doubt in your heart, but believe that whatever you said will come to pass. You will have what you say. That's the power of the tongue. But not realizing that, as I said, it is set on hell. The enemy will get you to use your words to choose death 
and to speak death into your own life and into the lives of others. The Bible talks about the kind of, a, there is a kind of person that does this. You may have met them, I may have met them, you might have been this kind of person at some point in your life. There's a kind of person who sharpened their tongue like a sword. And they bend their bows to shoot their arrows, which are bitter words. Can I talk to you today? I said, can I talk to you? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> there are a kind of people. They sharpen their tongue like a sword. Mm -hmm. uh, this morning, I, I, I cut the fruit for the uh, welcome reception. Oh, and yeah, the strawberries are just phenomenal. So stop by and get a chance. But usually when I when I cut a fruit or I use a knife for anything, I got a little my little favorite knife sharpener. It's really easy to use, got it on Amazon. <laughs> and I sharpen that knife every time I get ready to use it. Every time I get ready to use it. God says there are people who sharpen their tongue like they would sharpen a sword. What are they going to do with it? They bend their bows to shoot their arrows. Watch this. The arrows that they shoot are bitter words. Yes. You ever been there with somebody, maybe you, just went off at the mouth? Mm -hmm. You told them how you felt, what you didn't like, <laughs> what you thought, come on, did you want to to move? Sorry. How you couldn't stand, and you know, and, and, and you even told people, you know, I could make you feel real kind of, you don't even want to hear me tell you about this, because yeah. I could tell, cut you up on one side and cut you down. Come on, somebody, I need to be no quiet, but I'm talking about you and me. Come on. We've been there where we have used our words as a weapon against those that we love. When we've spoken sharply, even about the things in our own lives. And guess what? We're eating the fruit of that. We spoke death. We spoke bad. We spoke evil. And now we're, re we're, 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 we're receiving of what we have spoken. There's another verse that came to me, and I, I tried to get away from this because I, um, I do this one. And, and I, I said, well, Lord, you know, okay, I'll make the adjustment, but don't tell off on me in front of everybody else. <laughs> But he wouldn't let me get by it. I have to share it with you. Maybe this is you as well. And I know I have to be careful with my words, but watch this. You all remember Jesus said, for, uh, um, uh, for out of the abundance of the heart, come on, talk to me. So if bitterness is in your heart, bitter words are going to come out of your mouth. That's why he said, guard your heart with all diligence, because out of it flow the issues of life. And then he said, Beware, because you have to give an account of every idle word. You know your car idles? That means you ain't going nowhere. You can fall in your bathroom, you know, you're not revving the engine. We're just idle, not really going anywhere. Well, I would really, you know, I'm not really going anywhere with that discussion. It's just an idle word, not, not, not a big deal, right? No, according to Jesus, words matter. Yes. What you say absolutely makes a difference. Look at this in the scripture. Like the madman who throws firebrands, arrows, and death is the man who deceives his neighbor and says, oh, I was just saying. Or I was just joking. Oh, let's talk about it, because I really found myself in this verse of scripture. Um, I like the Avengers. I actually got turned on to it, you know, just I like action movies and so I ended up, you know, like, oh yeah, I remember that guy and then, you know, Black Panther came out, like, oh, then I went back and watched Captain America and then the Winter Soldier and all this other kind of, I'm like, man, all of this stuff is good. And then it came out with Infinity War and I left the movie mad. <laughs> now, if you ain't seen Infinity War by now, I'm not messing up the story. It's on you. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Spider Man died, and Black Panther died, and all these folks died at the end of the Civil War. And I wasn't expecting that. I went out to the theater like, <laughs> yeah, I had a real hard time about that. So, you know, I was so glad when the Endgame came out. 
And Endgame opens with this guy called Hawkeye. And his family died as a result of what happened in Infinity War. And he went on a rampage like a madman. I want you to imagine, understand what this verse is saying. Because there are times that you go off at the mouth. And you're just pulling back arrows and just letting it fly. You're kicking the dog. And you ain't no good, too. You ain't never been no good. And you ain't never gonna be no good. <laughs> just running off at the mouth. And sometimes even falling at the mouth. Madman. There's a guy who's shooting out these arrows, which are words. Speak to death. The same as a man who lies to someone close to them. And just says, oh, I was only joking. So my wife and I, we have an amazing relationship. I love that girl. I mean, I really, really do. And it's, it's almost as if she could do, do no wrong. And um, and so she, you know, every now and then she asks me, are, are we okay? I'm like, as far as I'm concerned, we are always okay. You know, if anything is anything I've done, and are you okay, right? But every now and then, I'll mess with her by acting like I'm upset. Uh, <laughs> and she did something, I don't like that. You know? And then later on, she asked me, seriously, are we okay? Do we need to talk? I was like, girl, I was just messing with you. <laughs> Man, when I read this scripture today, because think about what you're doing when you're acting and joking and so forth and so on. I'm not saying you can't have fun. We have fun. But he says, when you make somebody think something is true that's not, and then you just come back and say, well, I was just joking. You're like somebody who's shooting somebody, hurting them. Right. And then later on saying, well, I was just playing. Mm -hmm. Well, you hurt me at the time. Right. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, you, you put it on where it fits. Amen. I, I, know, I know what it would adjust in someone to make in my life. Let me get ready to close with this. Have you all gotten anything out of this? Oh, yeah. 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 This is a phenomenal word that can really change the order of your life. There was a situation where God took the prophet Ezekiel, and showed him a really bad place and a really bad situation. He showed him a valley that was full of death, skulls and skeletons and just bones, everywhere, as far as the eye could see. Maybe there was a war and maybe there was some genocide. Maybe, you know, one army defeated another army and left, left the valley just scattered and decay has now taken place where the bodies weren't buried and, and the bones then were now, now rotten to the bone. And now decaying and even the Bible says that the bones were very dry. It's been that way for a long, long time. Maybe you're in a marriage where it looks like that vow of death. It looks like there's no way that this is ever gonna be anything different than what it's been. Or maybe there's a situation going in, in your physical body or maybe with your finances. And as far as you can see, it doesn't look good. And this is a very, very bad situation. In that very moment, God comes to this prophet and asks him a question. And I'm coming to you today on behalf of God. And I'm asking you the same question. That dead thing that's in your life that's been bothering you and hanging on and you've been dragging it along and you've been, you know, to the place where you don't love your life. Even at the point where you wish that your life would be in it. The question to you today is can these bones live? What you say in that moment makes every difference in the world. We've got to learn how to watch what we say in the middle of bad situations. I like how the prophet answered because maybe it looks like an impossible situation, but he has enough experience with God to know that with God, all things 
are possible. With men, as far as we can see, there's no way this is ever going to be any different than it is right now. And if we answer according, we're going to eat and, and, and experience the cumulative result of those words of death that we spoke. So he answered and he said, oh, Lord God, I can neither confirm nor deny whether these bones can live. <laughs> I can't confirm them. But Lord, you know. He had a wise answer. But again, the Lord God came to him and he said, all right, I want you to prophesy to these bones this dead situation. Understand what the word prophesy means. It's an inspired utterance in a known tongue. When I prophesy over your life as I do often as I preach, I am inspired by God to say what I'm saying. I know what I'm saying today in this message. These verses, they were given to me, almost hand-delivered by God to give to you today. I'm speaking by inspiration. Also, remember this. That the tongue is set on fire by hell. Just like the tongue can be set on fire by heaven. And that blood be in me shut up in my bones. And I'm weary with trying to get it out. In the same way, the devil wants to inspire you to say something wicked to your wife. Say something nasty to your children. And to say something nasty about your child. I'm preaching better than you're saying. He wants to give you an inspired utterance. We've been there where we've seen as it was something come over this person. And they're just going off and they're in the moment. They are actually being inspired by hell to say what they're saying. He said, all right, son of man, prophesy to these bones. Let me tell you what to say. How many of y'all know we ought to say what God says? It might look bad in the body, but say what God says. Believe you. Do you, you, you care about us? You don't care about the 
they don't. You don't care. You don't care about me, but you ain't never cared about. Come on, somebody. I want to speak to this somebody today. Y'all get something out of it. 